and we can measure the number of trees on the planet with satellites. And we've done that over the whole planet. We've counted the number of trees in the whole world. We can measure how much carbon dioxide is emitted by burning coal and by burning petroleum because you can measure the tonnes which are uh, actually used. We can measure how much carbon dioxide is emitted from smelting because you know how many tonnes of metal are produced. And we work out that the planet is already at net zero. Vegetation is sucking up more carbon dioxide than the planet's humans are emitting. So we are already at net zero. Now that creates a scientific problem. Well, where the hell does the excess carbon dioxide come from? Well, it comes out of the oceans. About 3% of all emissions on planet Earth are from humans. The rest come out of the oceans. Some comes out of um, mammals breathing out like ourselves. I'm breathing out 4% carbon dioxide. And some of it comes out of volcanoes. So you can do some very simple calculations to show that we are being fed an enormous load of rubbish. And to make matters worse, if you look back in the past, we can see from looking at the past that every time we've had an ice age, we've had more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than now. So it's clear that carbon dioxide cannot drive global warming. And you can't dismiss the past, because if you do, by saying, and I've had this said to me, oh, yes, that's the past, and, you know, you geologists deal with stuff in the past, but uh, we're dealing with the present. If you use that argument, you then have to say, oh, wait a minute, the laws of physics and chemistry in the past were different from the laws of physics and chemistry now. So really, this is the greatest scientific and financial scam that we've ever been fed. It's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt the average person who is now suffering terribly from inflation and high cost of living. And much of that is just a simple cost of energy. And energy makes everything cheap or expensive.